Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX, and welcome to our class on Fibonacci and Fibonacci retracements. Now, as you all know, ETX is a regulated provider, so I'm therefore required to give you a risk warning. So let me read that and get it out of the way. Trading in the financial markets may result in the loss of your deposited funds. Please ensure that you fully understand the risk or seek advice of uh, independent advice if necessary. ETS Capital provides an execution-only service, and therefore any market analysis, opinion, commentary, or other information which is provided during this webinar is for educational purposes only and is not intended to be a personal recommendation or construed as advice. All traders must understand that there's a high element of randomness to the markets. Therefore, they will experience both winning and losing trades while following a trading strategy. Different traders following the same strategy will achieve different levels of performance. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. Now, for those of you that are joining us on the internet special and don't know much about us, we are a fast growing financial services company based in London. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA, that's the Financial Conduct Authority of the UK. And we are also a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. When you trade with ETX, you have a choice of two phenomenal platforms. You can use our all new Trader Pro platform. That's our internet online login platform. No downloads. Just set up a username and password and you can log right in to start trading. It gives you a wide array of tradable markets. You have the lowest possible spreads. You can use all types of order entries, including trailing stops. You can set up alerts and more. We have fully customizable charts. And our new ETX Trader Pro is fully personalized and customized. You can do whatever you want. You can widen the screen, narrow the screen. It's dynamic. It's user-friendly. You can change the background, change the colors. You set up whatever fits your comfort level and your style. And if you want a more professional environment where you can download our platform, you can use our ETX MT4 platform that allow you to add on expert advisors. We'll give you advanced charts and it will help you automate parts of your trading. It's a more sophisticated platform for a more sophisticated user with a user that also has a better computer understanding. But the ETX MT4 platform is a, one of the world's leading platforms out there. And our new trader view is phenomenal. It's easy to use, easy to access, it's user friendly, and it makes trading an enjoyable experience. And anytime you wanna go, you just simply log in and you're right on the Trader Pro platform. Like I said, no downloads and it's fully customizable. Now tonight's class is being recorded and you can see a recorded version of this class in about 24 hours after class by using the same link that you use to come to tonight's class. So simply just use the same way you tried to come to tonight's class and it'll ask, it'll take you right to the recorded version once it's uploaded and approved. So let's get started talking about Fibonacci. Now Fibonacci retracements are ratios used to identify potential reversals levels in a assets movement. These levels are found in the Fibonacci sequence. The most popular Fibonacci retracement levels are at 61.8 and 38.2. Now, <clears throat> 38.2 is usually rounded off to 38, and 61.8 is rounded off to 62 because you don't need an exact number. I use 38.2 and 61.8. Your charting services will give you 61.8 and 38.2. But if you're just estimating from the top of your head, or you're just talking about it, you can say the 62% level, we all know what you're talking about. Now, there's one more little weird factor in here because the Fibonacci retracement uses also 50%, that an asset will retrace 50% 50 of its move before bouncing back and turning around. 50% is not a Fibonacci number or part of the Fibonacci sequence, but it is part of the Fibonacci retracements only because 50% is so popular and, and, and happens so often. 
So Fibonacci retracements can also be applied after the decline to forecast the length of a counter trend bounce. These retracements can be combined with other indicators and price patterns to create an overall strategy. Now they come from the original Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. Now I get all kinds of emails and all kinds of messages. You know, sometimes they're not nice. Sometimes they're saying the guy's a moron. Sometimes they're, you know, because everybody hears what they want to hear. Now, if you go back to the very beginning, when Fibonacci was first developed his sequence, he did it using the multiplication of rabbits. You know, um, you start out with one rabbit and another one rabbit. Together, you have two rabbits, but that rabbit will produce a third. And you have two rabbits and three rabbits. You add them together, you get five rabbits. So it was it was some observation of watching a you know rabbits multiply, and it goes on and on and on forever, just like rabbits do. But the Fibonacci sequence starts out with zero, and then adding it to the next number, which would be one, and you add zero and one together, so you get the first of the whole Fibonacci sequence here, which is one, and you're constantly adding the previous to the current. So now you add one and one together, and it gives you two. You add one and two together, and it gives you three. Two and three together, it gives you five. Three and five together, it gives you eight. And it just goes on endlessly. Now, this is where it originally came from way back when. But then it was who introduced it to the world. Okay, we're not talking about who developed and who came up with the first idea. It's who talked about it, who who taught it, who who took this idea and took it public. You know, when we talk about electricity and light bulbs, was it Thomas Edison or was it the other guy from France that they say, you know, one or Alexander Graham Bell or who invented the telephone first? It We associate it with whoever promoted it. In this case, it started being pushed by Leonardo Bagolo, and then was actually made it through the West to other people. All that matters is it's been around for a very long time, these Fibonacci levels. Now, the sequence and the ratios extend to infinity and combine many unique mathematical properties. So when we take this Fibonacci sequence, after zero and one, each number is the sum of the two prior numbers. But a number, now, follow along with it, because this is how we move it over to, from the Fibonacci numbers over to the Fibonacci retracement levels or the Fibonacci ratios. Because you have all these numbers, zero, one, 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 two, one, you know, two, three. Okay. So a number divided by the previous number approximates 1.618. So in other words, if you had 21 and 13, because you had 8 and 13, and then when you added 8 and 13 together, you got 21 as the sequence moves up, and you divide the 21 by the 13, so you divide the number by the previous number, you would get 1.61. If you were to take the next level, which would be 34 and 21, you would then, because if you take 12 and 13 and add it together, I mean, 21 and 13 added together, what do you get? 34. So you take 34 and 21, which would have been the, the previous number, divide that, you get 161.9. 53 and 34, 161.7. So this gives us what we call, this is part of what's called the Fibonacci extension. It's about the highest number we look for in Fibonacci. So we look from zero to 100%. And then we go up to one higher levels than that. So a number now, a number divided by the next highest number approximates is 0.618. So if we take the 13 and the 21 sequence and divide it in the opposite direction, instead of 21 by 13, but 13, we get 0.619. If we do it with 21, 34, 0.617, 34, 55, 6181. The approximate, the approximation here is at 0.618 as these numbers increase. And so this is the basis for the 61.8% retracement because 
0.6180 is 61.8%. So we have the 16180 and we have the 6180. Now, the other important number comes from the number divided by two places higher. So if we were to take 13 and jump it past the 21 and go to the 34 and divide the 13 by the 34, we would get 38.2. So on and so on and so on. So these are how these sequences or ratios are developed. So we have 38.2, 61.8, And then we go to the lower number, which is Three pla they skip three places and divide it, so 13 and 55, and that gives you your 23.6. So we have what we call a secondary retracement level, only because it's not, it's there and it's a, a minor support or resistance level at the 23.6. We have a major resistance or support level at the 61.8. Now, like I said, we put in 50% because it's a popular retracement level. And then we go all the way up to 61.8. We keep doing this by moving one number down, two numbers down, three numbers down, four numbers in the sequence. So the 161.8 refers to the golden ratio or the golden mean, which is known as phi. The inverse of the 161.8 is 0.618. These ratios can be found throughout nature, architecture, and all of the world. The Greeks based much of their art and architecture on these proportions. They called it the golden mean. So these numbers can be found in everything around the world. It's if you divide the distance between your nose, your eyes, and your mouth. These circles on a shell, seashell. How it all comes to be? Don't know, don't care for right now. Um, it's more a philosophical question. But we're left with, in finance, the three most important levels we want to look at out of that sequence are 61.8, 50%, and 38.2. Now, these are the three most popular. So again, we can call them major support levels, and then we have the minor levels which are like the 23.6, the 71.8, the, you know, and, and so on and so on. Okay. When an asset is moving and has finished a directional movement, okay, its next movement will most likely retrace either 38.2%, 50%, or 61.8% of the move. So assets will often pull back or retrace a percentage of the previous move before reversing. The Fibonacci retraces often occur at three important levels, 38, 250, and 618. Now, as I said, actually the 50% level really does not have anything to do with Fibonacci, but traders use this level because of the tendency of assets to reverse after retracing half of its previous move. Let me get my marker off here. So let's go over, and now that we know the crucial numbers, we know a little brief history where it comes from, let's go look at a chart and see how we actually put these on a chart. So let me pop up some charts here for you on your screen. Okay, now we're just looking at an asset right here. You can see that these Fibonacci numbers have been drawn on this chart already, but we're going to go back to a blank chart in a minute and draw them on there anyway. But the way you put use the Fibonacci tool is you have to locate the previous trend, not the trend that it's currently in, the trend that has ended. You do this in a downtrend by finding the swing high and the swing low. It must be an ended trend. The trend must have physically ended because that's the only way you're gonna find the swing high and the swing low. If it's a downtrend or a reverse and an uptrend. So what the idea of Fibonacci is that when the asset moved all the way down that distance, it will most likely retrace up to 23.6, 38.2, 50% of its 
previous level that it moved here. Now, how do we do this? It's not very complicated. We locate on our charts, whether you're using the charts on the ETX platform, which are great charts to use. I don't use them only for class. I've tried to use them for class, but only because there's so much, what, what's the word? Um, I don't even know the word. There's so much activity going on in the platform because the charts are also part of all the stuff with the prices going up and down, the greens and the reds flashing. And even though I can enlarge the charts behind her, when I'm using the webinar, okay, something doesn't work smoothly for me. So I tend to use more other charts so I don't have a trading platform that's also attached behind us. But otherwise, if I'm using my, if I'm developing some strategy or, or looking at an asset, I'm looking at right on the ETX platform and using the charts right there. So once we've located the swing high and the swing low, now I'm going to put a word in here, okay, because it makes a difference, okay. When we say the swing high and the swing low, it's, of course, the highest point it reached in the previous trend. Okay. And a swing high is the high from that number, not where it closed, not where the midpoint. It is the highest point it attained in that previous trend. The swing low is the lowest point it made in that previous trend. But it has to be a significant swing high and swing low okay because if you had your what you thought your swing high is and for some reason like today just the federal reserve did something when they came out and said they were announcing you know interest increase or whatever they did the asset soared all the way up there for one second and came back down this would not be your necessarily your swing high because it had no significance it was a, a momentary blurb caused by something so we want to locate the beginning of the trend and the lowest point and the top of the trend using your significant high swing high and swing low. Now, what you do is you come over to wherever it's offered, where you find your tools and you would locate your Fibonacci retracement tool. And so here we click on fibs and then we simply pull it from the high To the low and click it okay. and that's all that we do okay that wasn't so complicated it's on there you can see all the levels put on the right hand side you can see the 618 they're just laying over top of the levels i had already done and you can see them all along on your charts so i got rid of that one i just drew for you because i already have it on the on the chart and as you can see We have the 100 level, 88.6 is a minor, 78.6 is a minor Fibonacci retracement level. Then we have the 61.8, which is a key important level. We have the 50 and the 38.2, a minor level, 21.6, and then an important level at the zero. Now, all the tools will allow you to color code the stuff any which way you want. And you could change the color so you can make these, or you can make the lines thicker and narrower depending on what you want to use for your trading side. So like you see here, I put the 50 level on here and I darkened it here. But you can also do this with your tool and you can make them whatever color each level you want and how wide you want the level. Okay, I'll show you again. Let's put the tool back on here. Let me get my marker off. So you can customize it to fit your So right now I have it on rainbow, multicolor. But see, we can go right back into the properties and we can set whatever levels, whatever colors and levels we want. We can also set the levels we want to see because we don't need to see all of these are Fibonacci levels, Fibonacci retracement calculations. We don't need to necessarily see all of those. We can either extend the lines or not extend the lines and we can color code them. So if we want to make 61.8, we want to make the important level 618, 50, and 382 all gold and leave all the other ones in blue. 
we can do that so that we can actually see and we understand what the major levels are. It's up to you to decide what fits your desire. Okay. So that is how easy it is to put the Fibonacci on your chart. Now, it is the exact opposite when you are putting it on an uptrend instead of a downtrend. Because then you would pull it from the significant low up to the significant high because it would be reversed in the exact opposite point. Okay. So you do the opposite. You just pull it the opposite level. So right now what it's calculating is this was the value of the whole move of that previous trend. And if you notice, this is 100% and this is zero. That whole move is calculated. If we go to over here to prices, we can actually see that this was at 78.36 and this was at 46.99. So we can calculate the difference of that whole move. And then if we were to, to take that move by 50%, we would end up here at the 50% level. And that would be our 50%, which is 62.8, which is the actual price, not the division. And that's how easy it is to put these on your charts. So let's go back and talk a little bit more about once you have them on the charts, what you want to do with them. Because having something and using it, and I'll show you some other charts and some other trading. But here we can see here on a chart of the pound Japanese yen today. Okay, we can see that we have the structural levels put on here for the previous swing high and the swing low. The Fibonacci levels are already dropped on here for you. Here's the 61.8 to 23.6. Okay. In this case, we've actually added it together with lines of support and resistance, majors and minors, and we can see how they are all reacting together. So we can see as price has moved, okay, so we have our first resistance, which is the 78.6 of the Fibonacci level, which was also the horizontal swing high resistance, as well as a 68.2 Fibonacci extension right here. Here we have a major support level, which is the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement and the 61.8 Fibonacci extension. Now, what's the difference? We look at extensions either from above the price, anything above 100, or from a previous Fibonacci, because you don't have to take them off of your chart. So in other words, in this case, we, we could have drawn a Fibonacci Previous, we would have had our Fibonacci tool on here from this downtrend projecting forward. Then when the price hit the found made another significant low and reverse trend, we would put another Fibonacci grid on here at this level. And at some point, those price levels overlap each other because a Fibonacci level doesn't necessarily die. The only one that's really valid is the current one. But you also could use the previous Fibonacci levels that were there as extensions to help you interpret the market. So in this case, we're combining this with stochastics, support and resistance levels. So here we have a major support level. Here we have the price at a major resistance level. We were expecting it to bounce off of that major resistance and come down to support. But as price does, it broke through and moved up towards so this became our new support level and is moving up here towards this resistance level. So at this point, we might be looking at that move. We're not sure. It might have been a temporary move and might return underneath that level. We don't know. We just knew this level was significantly important. So when it broke through that and didn't bounce off of it, we're now revising our strategy. So what you got was an alert. What you got was some important information, especially if you're in the market, maybe you'd want to get out. Or if you were looking to enter the market in a short, you're, you're not entering the market because you say, uh oh, my strategy wasn't right. Here again, we have the horizontal overlap of resistance and a Fibonacci level. Here we see major resistance at a 38.2 level. And We had this over here previously. Right. 
Okay, so in order to find these, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to do something correct here. So in order to find these Fibonacci retracement levels, you have to find the, the recent significant swing high and swing low. Remember that word significant. Then for downtrends, click on the swing high and drag the cursor to the most recent swing low. For uptrends, do the opposite. Click on the swing low and drag the cursor to the most recent swing high. Remember this because I also tend to not think twice and automatically start pulling it from the bottom to the top. And you can't. You have to make sure you pull them in the right direction. Otherwise, you're laying the grid on upside down. So again, we locate the relevant swing low and the relevant swing high of the current move, the current trend that has ended, not the trend you're in, the trend that has ended, because you can't get a swing high and a swing low if it's still a current trend. And because the asset's going to retrace its previous move. So in this case, Let me just get my marker back on here. In this case, the asset has reached its swing high, which was this point, the highest point of a, a, a highest point before it reversed. So this would give you your swing high. This would give you your swing low. Okay. Now, it can move into a whole bunch of congestion. All that we know is that this trend is over. Okay. So it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to fall right in a downtrend. But we're only concerned with the move of the previous trend when we draw our tool onto the charts. Okay, again, it's the exact opposite for a downtrend than it is for an uptrend. So in order to apply Fibonacci levels to your charts, you'll need to identify the swing high and swing low. Okay, another way to say is simply a swing high is a candlestick with at least two lower highs of both the left and the right of itself. A swing low is a candlestick with at least two higher lows on both the left and the right of itself. I don't use, I don't use these strict rules. I use the significant swing high and swing low, but this is just another viewpoint that you can use. When using Fibonacci tools, the probability of Forex trading success could increase when used with other support and resistance levels, trend lines, and candlestick patterns for spotting entry and stop loss points. Fibonacci levels alert traders or investors of a potential trend reversal. They provide so resistance and support areas. Retracements are based on the prior move. A bounce is expected to retrace a portion of its prior decline, while a correction is expected to retrace a portion of its prior advance. Once a pullback starts, charters can identify specific Fibonacci retracement levels for monitoring. If the correction approaches these retracements, charters should become more alert for a potential bullish pullback. So here we can see the daily chart and these are simple alert zones. And when you combine these alert zones with also your support and resistance levels or your pivot points, you can make these all alert zones or areas and shade them in because you'll find how often these 61850 and, and 382 sit right at areas of support and resistance from other technical analysis indicators, like I said, like pivot points or eyeballing support and resistance. And these will give you alert zones. Okay. The inverse applies to a, a, a bounce or a corrective advance after a decline. Okay. So remember, it's just the opposite as it was in an incline. And please, like I said, I screw it up all the time. Don't just blindly start pulling your tool from the bottom to the top. You have to pull the pull in the right direction, otherwise your zones are upside down. So keep in mind that these retracement levels are not 
hard reversal points. Instead, they serve as alert zones for a potential reversal. It is at this point that traders should employ other aspects of technical analysis to identify or confirm a reversal. These may include candlesticks, price patterns, momentum oscillators, and moving averages. So remember, the common retracement tool on most charts show four common retracements, and these are what we call the significant zones, 23.6, 38.2, 23.6 is a minor, 38.2 a major, 50% minor, 61.8 a major, and then we have 71.6 after that, that's a minor. It is clear that 23.6, 38.2, and 61 stem from the ratios found within the Fibonacci sequence. Now, based on the depth, we can consider a 23.6 retracement to be a relatively shallow retracement. Shallow retracements occur, but catching these requires a closer watch and a quicker trigger point. So what we would look for is we would also want to look for maybe this in a chart pattern. So we can see here, we can see a trading wedge going on directly between the Fibonacci level, the, the retracement level of zero down to the 38.2. So we have modern retracements, we have hard retracements, we have very deep retracements. So the golden retracement is expected at 61.8. Okay, so as you're retracing, 23.6 is just a minor, it happens very often. 38.2 is the first major step, and you're hoping when it retraces, it bounces off 38.2 and moves back up to its prior trend. Because remember, trends move and pushes and ease Put, uh, proper trend moves is a push and an ease, push and an ease, push and an ease, push and an ease, with it making lower lows and higher highs each time. So we would never expect the retracement to fall below this level. Okay, when it moves down to it makes its next retracement, we would never expect it to fall below that level. Okay, so what we, where we would expect it to bounce is at the 38 two. If it misses that 38.2, we would expect it at 50. So they're only telling you that these are points where you should expect a reaction from the asset, just so you have a support and resistance line. These support and resistance levels don't tell you anything's going to happen. They tell you to watch. They tell you to be alert that you expect something to happen, and you want to combine these. First of all, if you watch very closely and watch it as price approaches that retracement level and you watch volume, if that asset is most likely going to bounce off of that, okay, as it gets closer, you'll start to see increased volume because the buyers are re-entering the market at that price, and they'll eventually push that price back up. If you don't see volume increasing, it's most likely going to fall to 50. Okay. Because what you're looking for in an uptrend is you're looking for a point where the buyers want to resell the market. They're saying that asset eased out enough. I'm going to buy now to ride out that wave. It's also cleared out all the sell orders. So if you've been paying attention in class, you know by now you need to combine the Fibonacci retracement tool with support and resistance levels and trend levels to create a simpler, a simple but super awesome trading strategy. When combining Fibonacci retracement tools with candlestick patterns, we are actually looking for exhaustive candlesticks. If you can tell when buying or selling pressure is exhausted, it can give you a clue of when price may continue to trend. So what we'd be looking for as, again, using combining with candlesticks and the interpretation of candlesticks, is we would expect when a price is moving up that it would bounce up to that next Fibonacci level. And we want to see here we got a bullish candle because it was moving up, but it actually, the high actually broke that 61.8 level. So that gives us a point that might say that the price will continue upward from that level. Okay. If we got it and it wasn't able to meet that 61.8 level or was say significantly lower, then we're saying, uh-oh, the bulls are dominating the market. If we get something like a doji right in the middle of a Fibonacci level, that's telling us there's indecisiveness. Okay. So the market are unsure of what they're going to do. So most likely it will ease off that pattern. 
So it can look like the buyers were exhausted. So look at all the red candles. Okay. Eventually, the price reached to the, new, the swing low down at 100% or down at 0%. It eventually price broke through the former high and continued on the uptrend in this example. Okay. So each time we want to look at how the candlestick and the price of each of the levels reacts, and that will give us some clue as to what we can expect in the market. Combine that with volume, you might have a good trading system. Okay. Or a good alert system telling you to exit the market. When you want to set your stop losses, you might use a Fibonacci level and right below or above, depending whether you're trading up to go or down, to use that for your stop loss exit point. So what you want to do is for your stop loss or your exit point, you want to pay, place your stop loss just past the next Fibonacci level. So the first method is to set up your stop just past the Fibonacci level. So if you're planning to enter at a 38.2 Fib, then you would place your stop beyond the 58%, the 50 percent level. So in other words, if you had decided if the asset breaks through the 38.2 level, coming down, okay, and you're going to sell at, right when it bounces off of that 38.2 level, you would set your stop loss at the 50% level, so if the asset just turned around bounced for a second, it wouldn't close you out when the hopes that the asset will continue downward. If you're planning to enter the 38.2, then you would place your stop beyond the 50% level. If you felt like the 50% level would hold, then you place your stop at the 61.8. But then you have to apply your risk reward ratio to see if that, you know, you will even want to stay in the market if it goes to the 61.8 level. Now, if you want to be a little safer, another way to set your stop would be to place them past the recent swing high or the recent swing low. This type of stop loss placement would give your trade more room to breathe and give you a better chance for the market to move in your favor of a trade. But remember, apply risk management and money management skills here. The truth is, just like in combining the Fibonacci retracement tool with support and resistance trend lines and candlesticks, to find better entries, it would be best to use your knowledge of these tools to analyze the current environment to help you pick a good stop loss point. As much as possible, you shouldn't rely solely on Fibonacci levels as support and resistance points, or you sh as much as possible, you shouldn't rely solely on Fibonacci levels as support and resistance points as the basis for your stop loss payment. Remember, stop loss placements isn't a sure thing. So, Fibonacci retracements are often used to identify the end of a correction or a counter trend bounce. Corrections and counter trend bounces often retrace a portion of the prior move. While short 23.6 retracements do occur, 38.2 and 61.8 covers the most possibilities. This zone may be big, but it is just a reversal alert zone. Other technical singles, signals are needed to confirm a reversal. Reversals can be confirmed with candlesticks, momentum indicators, volume, 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 and chart patterns. In fact, the more confirming factors, the more robust the signal. And so on that note, I hope I gave you some general information about Fibonacci's. Okay, Fibonacci's are well worth learning about, well worth practicing. And the more you use them, the more you'll see how price reacts to them. So once you have these significant levels, you don't have to trade them. Just start putting them on your charts and look and see what happens when price touches those levels. You'll start to see this visual you know, because it's a visual portrayal. And you'll start to automatically say, uh-oh, I should be getting a reaction to that level. Or uh-oh, price didn't break through that level. Or uh-oh, price bounced off that level. And am I, do I want to remain in the market or am I ready to enter the market? Okay, what other tools will I use with this? But you'll find that Fibonacci's are a great tool. They are so popular. They're used by traders throughout the entire globe. They're all they're parts of lots of trading strategies. They're parts, they're used in all types of auto auto traders and robotic trading because they are so reliable. So on that note, I'm going to say goodnight to you all. Thank you very much. The April schedule of webinars has been loaded up on the platform. 
And you'll see we have a couple new classes coming up in April. And don't forget, time is changing shortly. Um, so we're going over to BST time. So the new times for April are posted in BST time. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. And remember, you can access a recorded version of this class by using the same link used to come to tonight's class in about 24 hours. Have a great night and thank you for supporting ETX. Good night now.